Hi, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about what does it mean to be normal or what doesn't it mean to be normal? What's the definition of normal? So many questions. That's what we're going to dive into today. Grab your Bibles, grab your pen, grab your journal and get ready to take a look at this and what God's definition is and how we can grow. And hey, if you haven't done so already, why not hit the share button and we can invite some others to join us. So here we go. First Peter 2, 9 out of the Passion Translation says, but you are God's chosen treasure, priests who are kings, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. And now he claims you as his very own. He did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. You know, whenever I read this, just a little side note, that last sentence, he did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. You know, if you go to spread grass seed, you broadcast it. In fact, there's there's even equipment that you use. Like there's there's this little bin you put the grass seed in and then the hand crank. And what it does is it broadcasts or, or it spreads it. You know, you are God's chosen treasure. Okay, you are. Just say that right now. I am God's chosen treasure. I am God's chosen treasure treasure and as that they mean that means that you're set apart and not only are you set apart but you're called out of darkness with a reason okay you're called out of darkness to actually experience his marvelous light and to be claimed as his own which means you belong you belong and why did you do all this goes back to that thing of broadcasting that casting seed you know so that so that we would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world of course another um definition of broadcast like there's people who are broadcasters who you know, are on the news on the media or whatnot what's coming out of our mouth what are we spreading okay what are we proclaiming in this in this season so this is what we're looking at right here that's to be the normal christian life so before we go any further let's just stop and pray right here before we talk about what the opposite of holy is and what normal is and all that, because right here, this in first Peter two, nine is to be the normal Christian life. Okay. So heavenly father, um, we thank you that we are your treasure and father, we ask for your forgiveness for the times when we haven't recognized that we're set apart where we've, we've hidden instead of broadcasting the good news of who you are, of spreading the seed or of verbally proclaiming, of living a life that magnifies you. So Father, we ask your forgiveness for that. And Father, we want to get back on the right path because God, if we're your chosen treasure, you're not hiding us, God. You wanna show us off for the world because as you show us off, ultimately we show you off, God. That's, that's what we're created to do. And so, Father, we just pray that as we look at this, that you would highlight things in our lives that are holding us back from the fullness of the, being the person that you've called us to be. So, Father, just tune our ears to hear, our eyes to see, and our hearts to understand as we dive into your word. We just thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I want to read that one more time before we dive in. To me, this is such a powerful verse, and it's really pivotal, and we want to catch it. So, again, 1 Peter 2.9. But you are God's chosen treasure, priests who are kings, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. And now he claims you as his very own. He did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. Okay, so what's the opposite of holy? If we're God's chosen treasure, if we're kings, we're priests, we're a spiritual nation, that we're really called to be holy. What's the opposite of holy? Um, immediately, a lot of you are probably saying sinful, that the opposite of holy is sinful or maybe even evil. Okay, but how about ordinary? Could the opposite of holy just be that we're ordinary, that we actually, um, we give in to the ways of the world or we become like the world rather than broadcasting the goodness of the kingdom of heaven? You see, when we look at, holiness it's so much more than just freedom from sin amen it's so much more it also means that we're set apart from the ordinary and the mandoon ways of life okay so it means that we're set apart god's chosen treasure priests who are kings a spiritual nation set apart why are we set apart? Because we're God's devoted ones, because we have a different path, because we understand that our citizenship is in heaven, which makes us by the world standards, it makes us rather odd. 
it means that we're not normal. Um, you know, in, in our family, we've always joked about what's normal. And we've, we've come up with there's no such thing as normal for the believer. We cannot afford to be normal by the world standards. You know, the, a couple of definitions here of the word normal, conforming to a type standard or regular pattern, character, characterized by that which is considered usual, typical, or routine. Not deviating from a norm, a rule, a procedure, or a principle. So we have to be set apart from what the world calls ordinary, and we have to be set apart from what the world calls normal. So how does this look? I mean, that's something to jot down right now. What does it look like for me to be set apart? Okay, what does it look like for me to be set apart? What does it look like not to conform to the standards of the world? And with that goes a great question, Lord, where am I conforming to the standards of the world? Where have I allowed the world's normal to define me? And I just wanna say, as we ask these questions, we all have areas, we all do. None of us have reached perfection, but here's the thing, when we, when we ask Holy Spirit to reveal, he will reveal these places to us because his heart's for you. It's not against you. It's always for, for you. So when he reveals something, it is always 100% of the time an invitation for healing, wholeness, freedom, for to grow in who he's called you to be, to grow as a king, as a spiritual nation, as a one set apart, to be able to broadcast his goodness even further. So... Um, Okay, so back to what does it look like? You know, food for thought. When we look at church statistics and we look at all the demographics, we design our church programs to fit a specific demographic. Now, you know, I've spent many years on church staff and I've been through these, all the leadership books, all the church growth books, and there's absolutely a place for this, okay? But it can't be the full driving factor. Why? because we're set apart, we're called to be different. We're actually called to deviate from the norm. And so when we look at like from a church planting perspective, yes, we look at the demographics, the needs of the area and stuff, but there's another flip side of this where we need to lean back into the Holy Spirit and say, okay, Lord, what's my imprint supposed to look like here? Okay, how does, how does this look? How do you want us to be unique and to step into the situation? Because we might be called to do something different than the norm or different than what it looks like on the surface because God wants to do a new thing in us through us. And that's true from a personal perspective also. So we can look at what's going on and we can look at about where we see the needs and all of that. And like I said, it comes into play, but we also need to get in the prayer closet and say, okay, God, you've given me unique gifts. You have a call on my life. How does this play out? How does it go out? Because I don't want to fit in the normal. That's something I've fought a lot as I've moved deeper into ministry and what God's called me to do is I have to fight what can, it can seem normal and really, you know, take, listen to what people are saying and look at that and, and, you know, look at the statistics and all that, but also lean back with Holy Spirit and say, okay, what am I supposed to be doing in this time, in this season? Because I'm to represent you because you've made me a priest who's a king. You've made me a spiritual nation. I'm set apart as your devoted one. You've called me out of darkness to experience your light, which means I'm supposed to call others out of darkness. And why? So that I can broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. I have to be able to broadcast what he's doing through, you know, throughout the world as, you know, where he tells me to. So we talk about like attracts like, but God's principles are that God attracts the unalike. Um, what I mean by this is that when we get out of our norm, we're going to find that we have relationships with people who we may not have had relationships with otherwise. I mean, it, it's like when, when we're walking in the kingdom of heaven and who he's called us to be, then ethnicity doesn't matter. Age doesn't matter. Socioeconomic background doesn't matter. You see, we become family because we understand that we're priests who are kings, that we're a spiritual nation, that we're set apart as God's devoted ones, that we're called out of darkness to experience his marvelous light, we're claimed as his very own, and we broadcast, you know, this to the world around us. So going back to the word holy, Genesis 2-3 is the very first place where holy is used, and scripture says, and God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because it was the day when he rested from the work of creation. 
In other words, he took that day and he set apart, he made it different. He stepped out of the normal pattern. He, he'd been creating, creating, creating. And then he's like, stop, this is holy. The other thing, when we talk about this term royal priesthood, royal could be a designation of honor that we serve as priests, okay? And we know that, we understand that. And or it can also reveal that the church serves as a ruling function in the kingdom of God, that we don't just represent God to the world with our lives, although we need to, we absolutely should, but we're God's chosen people in order that we may proclaim, broadcast, speak out, tell the world about Jesus. Okay, let's take this one step further. There was a song when I was in college that really stuck to me, it stuck within me. And, it, and I've mentioned this a number of times. It says, when he looks at me, when he, God looks at me, he sees not what I used to be, but he sees Jesus. Okay, so let me suggest that as we represent the world to God, he hears our prayers, he sees us, okay? We pray, hallowed be thy name or make his name famous, okay? Make his name famous. One of the things I loved about teaching in Africa is we really talked a lot about our job is to make Jesus's name famous. We don't hear that language a lot here in the United States where I'm at, but I so loved it as they would talk about making Jesus's name famous. So when we come down and we look at all this, remember I said we'd be attracted to different people that we may not be attracted to normally by the world standards, and yet God changes everything. God has chosen the abnormal people of this world to be the display of his kingdom here on the earth because we're not supposed to fit into the worldly mode. Therefore, we will be declared as being abnormal. Just saying. Um, and of course, we're called to be a holy nation. Holy carries moral implications as well. The church is to be different and to carry yourself differently. And I think that's a big question right now is how is the church standing apart from the world? Now, church, big C church, how is the big C church standing apart from the world? Is the big C church standing apart from the world? Some yes, some no, okay? A lot of, a lot of the body of Christ have capitulated, but I wanna say this before we just look at it out there and say big C church, what about me? Okay, where have I capitulated? Where have I come into the agreement with the ways of the world as opposed to standing for the things of heaven okay because if i'm set apart if i'm called to be holy then i'm that i'm not supposed to be normal by the world standards i am supposed to be taking a stance i am supposed to be a little odd by the world standards um you know in other words you know we are an ambassador we're ambassadors of heaven on earth and we talk about that but what does that mean and that would be a great thing to journal what does it mean for me to be an ambassador of heaven on the face of this earth? How does it play out in my life? And spend time with the Holy Spirit, really journaling that and looking at that and allow him to speak to you about what that looks like. You know, Emma Stark, she says this, I, I love it. She says, a Jew doesn't go into a synagogue and expect someone to come out of their wheelchair. A Hindu doesn't go to the temple and expect blind eyes to open. A Muslim doesn't go to the mosque and expect the dead to be raised. But a Christian should expect all these things in church. Miracles are a major part of how we are different. People should hear rumors that healing are happening in the church and turn up on the doorstep. Miracles are a major part of why we're not normal. So are we making space? Are we, are we contending for the signs, wonders, and miracles, the fullness of God in our gatherings? and making a stance for who the Lord is. You know, again, back to 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and to speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you, from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. So how are you doing at standing apart from the world? Again, grab that journal, ask the Holy Spirit, journal it, step into it because you're called to make a difference. You are, I want you to hear this, it, take, take and write out your journal, 1 Peter 2, 9, and also write out under it, 
um, write it out in the passion. You can you can uh, search for it in the passion, then search for it in the message. Those are the two that I read. And then look at it in some other versions also. Pull it up in the English Standard Version. Pull it up in, in uh, you know, the New Living Translation. Pull it up in King James, okay, pull it up and look at this and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. What does it mean to be chosen by God? What does it mean to, to have a high calling? What does it mean to be a priest? What does it mean to be a king? What does it mean to be holy? And what does it mean to be God's instrument to be used by the Lord? And take that and, and as you look at the different versions of scripture, allow the Holy Spirit to speak into that and and to just highlight things and there's going to be some some things that you're going to be wow like i rejoice over that i didn't even realize lord you were using me like that and there's going to be other things where it's like oh lord forgive me because i did become normal by the world standards rather than walking with you into the fullness of who you've called me to do you're going to be excited like this is exciting to do this and to see what god wants to do in and through you so i want to encourage you to do that today as you continue in your walk with the Lord, as you continue to grow, remember who you are, some of those identity statements you can also write in your journal right now. I am a king. I am a priest. I am set apart. I am one of God's devoted ones and begin to decree and declare this to the atmosphere because it's part of your identity per scripture. OK, so why not claim it? That's who God says you are. So, all right, I'm going to wrap it up there. If you want to learn more about me, my name is Ruth Hendrickson or about the ministry. It is ruthhendrickson.com is the website. That's where you can go. And you're going to find all sorts of resources on there to help you. And hey, if the if you've been with us for a while and these are really helping you as you grow for the in the Lord, just want to invite you to donate, to sow into the ministry. Again, on the website, you can find the donate link. And you're just going to continue to help us keep going as we broadcast the seed to the world around us. Have a great day. Be so blessed. Remember, you are here for such a time as this. So don't stop short of all that God has for you.